it's a joint work from uh, a few students, a few international students that we had at ISEP. So ISEP is the School of Engineering of the Polytechnic of Porto. So it's a joint work between these students and also the team of supervisors of EPS. And regarding my presentation, it, it has this uh, output. So I will start with a brief presentation. Then I will present the project supportive modules that we uh, teach in EPS. And after that, I will present project development. And I will end with some conclusions. Since this, this is a conference more on the area of education, I will skip some of the technical details of the project and I will just focus on the educational aspects of the project. And I would just like to say that this uh, presentation and also EPS has something to do with some of the topics that we are discussing here this morning. I remember the second presentation this morning on which our colleague had a, a, a table with some of the skills that were required for engineers and also the previous presentation on problems of students when they are going to uh, the, the market or to the labor market and we also try to address this with the EPS, okay? So first thing to start, what is EPS, okay? <coughs> so EPS is what we call European Project Semester. So this is a one semester capstone project or internship program that is uh, targeted, let's say, to prepare future, future engineers to think and act globally. So we want to prepare engineers for the world, okay? So this is the main idea. And it's typically uh, targeted to engineering students, but we also take product design students and business undergraduates, okay? So these are the main uh, uh, targets for our uh, studies. And EPS is presently uh, offered by 19 European schools, and <coughs> these schools have to obey what we call 10 golden rules of EPS. So these 10 golden rules specify how the program must be run, okay? And typically, these rules, they state that EPS is project-centered, so it's a project-based learning methodology. The working language is English, so all the program must be running in English, independent of the, the school on which we are. The accompanying subjects must support the project, so the students have to develop a project, and besides that, they have some courses, but those courses are targeted also on the project, okay? All the things that they learn are for helping on developing the project. Then the main focus is teamwork, and since it's teamwork, there are some rules for the teams. And the teams must be multinational, okay? They have to have between three and six students, and these uh, the teams must have students from at least three nationalities, so from three different countries, and if possible, they should come from different backgrounds, from different areas of studies, okay? So this is the idea of EPS. And all these 19 schools can tailor EPS to their own uh, ideas, let's say so. And so, in ISEP, we have what we call EPS at ISEP, and we also have the project, so the project runs for the entire semester, so these are the uh, weeks of the semester. At the beginning of the semester, the students have a module that is called Team Building, it helps them to start working together, and then they have a module that is project management that runs during the entire semester. And in this project management course, they typically learn how to run a project, <coughs> and they learn it by running their own projects. So they are the ones that have to run their project. We don't run the project, okay? They have to define targets, milestones, deadlines, everything is with them. And then they have a few other modules, and Energy and Sustainable Development, Ethics and Geotology, and Marketing. These modules run only on the first half part of the semester, and they give them some knowledge to help to develop their prototype. Okay, so they have the theoretical concepts, but then they apply those theoretical concepts to the project that they are developing. And then they have two other modules, one of them is Communication, and the other one is Foreign Language. In this foreign language, they typically have Portuguese, and these two modules run during the entire semester and help them to prepare all the materials for their, uh, let's say, deliverables for the project, okay? And regarding the evaluation, they have, let's say, two main uh, milestones, and they have another milestone here at the beginning on which they have to develop what we call team agreements after the uh, team building process. So this team agreement specifies what should they do in case there are some problems inside of the group. And typically there are some problems inside of the group since they never work together. They are from different countries, they are from different nationalities, from different backgrounds, and typically we have problems, okay? And then they have some interim presentations, and in this interim presentation they have to deliver a report and make a presentation. They are evaluated based on that. They have peer assessment and also teacher assessment. 
and this assessment mainly uh, gives them feedback on how they should run the project until the end. And then they have the final evaluation, and on this final evaluation they have again to uh, deliver a new report, they have to prepare a paper, they have to prepare a video, and they have to make a new presentation. Okay, and this is what gives them the final grades. Okay, so in this case, in the case of this team, so this team arrived to Porto, they had a Belbin test. The Belbin test is what allows us to form the group, so they are not formed from the nothing, let's say, so they are uh, required to fill a uh, psychotechnical uh, test and then based on some criteria we form the teams. And in this case the team has a student from Poland, Italy, Portugal, UK and the Netherlands. So five different, <coughs> students, five, five different nationalities and five different backgrounds. Okay, logistics, media technologies, mechanical engineering, electrical, electronic and engineering uh, and energy engineering and industrial product design. So typically our groups are like this. Okay? And they receive a list of possible projects that they can uh, develop and in this, in this case these students opted to develop what they call an outdoor intelligence shader. Okay? Typically the list of projects has some very vague requirements. Okay? We don't say how they should do the project. We just give them the idea and the budget. Okay? The budget is also very low because we want them to think on how they are going to implement things on severe conditions, so they have to face problems. Mm -hmm. Because if we give them a budget of 2,000 euros, they just go to a shop and they buy everything and they do it easily. So they have to think on how to do it, okay? And they need to make the studies on how to develop the prototype. So first they have to conceive the prototype, then they need to understand how they are going to develop, they have to choose the components, and they have to implement the prototype all with this budget, okay? Obviously the work doesn't count, it's just components to work they work, let's say, for free, okay? Work for free. Sorry? Work for free. Yes, they work for free during <laughs> this. They are students, yes, of course. <laughs> not, no, no, during this, this, during this uh, semester, we don't count on, the, on, on their work, okay? And so, regarding the, the way that the, the EPS is run, so everything runs around the project and the team, okay? So they have these supportive modules, we have already discussed this about them, so they, these are more or less typical classes, okay, so they have classes, but all the knowledge that is gathered on this module <coughs> must be applied to the project. And then the team, each week, has to define an agenda for having a meeting with the team of supervisors, and I belong to the team of supervisors. So the team of supervisors is constituted by five teachers, also from different departments at this end. And we meet with them each week for half an hour, but they have to define the agenda. If they don't have anything to discuss with us, we don't discuss anything with them. Mm -hmm. Okay? So they have to prepare the agenda. And each week there is a different team leader on each team. So we need or we want them to be leaders of teams. So every week the team is different. So the one that is like the spokesman of the team that asks the questions, that tries to uh, make all the notes. Besides this weekly meeting, obviously if they have some difficulties on their project, we can, for instance, ask for scientific and technical help, let's say experts, that are typically other colleagues from our school. Okay? And even us, we, have, or we are available to meet with them besides this the supervision meeting. Okay? <laughs> when the project is being developed, when they are in, uh, developing things and implementing things, they typically have technical questions and let's say on three or four three or four uh, last weeks of the semester, we typically meet with them several times, okay? But this is the main idea. And so, now I will just try to explain a bit uh, more this with uh, a specific <coughs> example, and in this case, a specific, specific example is this uh, outdoor intelligence. So I will just give the example of the marketing supportive course. So in the marketing supportive course, they do what we call <coughs> state of the art. But this state of the art, it's not a typical state of the art, the scientific state of the art. It has some technical uh, aspects that they have to consider, but also some commercial aspects, because they always have to develop a prototype, and the idea is for that prototype to give rise to a product that goes into the market. And so in this case, they have seen different types, different types of uh, shapes, let's say, so parasols, uh, Venetian blinds, and stuff like that. 
and they decided, they decided that they were going to design a new type of parasol, ready the novel wellness and luxury experience. So these are their words, okay? And they want to combine functionalities of smart electronics with traditional parasols. So this is what they decided to do. And then they made the market segmentation, the positioning of their product, the brand the design. So we have here the brand and design for their product. Here, the brand, the, the brand design, we are going to see it in the next slides. They decided that when developing this product, they were going to focus on Europe, and the proposal product, from their viewpoint, has no rival in Europe, okay? So this is their idea. And then they combine what they call the smart technology and modern design. So these are their ideas. So this is the logo, and this is the first ideas that they had, so they consider several different ideas, and then they decided for going on something like this, okay? Uh, a parasol that could, that had a, a, a cover that could rotate from one side to the other. And this rotation could be manual or automatic. So they got those initial ideas, they got to this final design, and from this final design, they made, let's say, the detailed uh, technical design with all components that were needed. They made this prototype rendering, and then they had to work on several of the uh, technical aspects of the project. So they started by developing a black box diagram with all the blocks that they needed to make their products uh, work. Then they made also a finite element analysis for the bars that were going to support the, the parasol. They made detailed drawings of the assemblies that they were going to need, okay? All of this based on the components that they chose and that they bought for developing the product with the restriction of 100 euros on the budget. So they, can, they were able to develop everything with 100 euros, okay? Then they made all the electronic schematics. So this is based on an Arduino uh, microcontroller, some sensors, some actuators, okay, for uh, some actuators, some motors for uh, rotating the, the, the cover. And then they also developed the code for uh, the Arduino. And based on this, they got to this prototype. So this is a small scale prototype, okay, so this is not a huge thing, it's something with about one, one and a half meter. So they got to the prototype and the prototype works as they intended, okay? So this is the main idea of EPS. So just for concluding this presentation. So for us, EPS is an innovative educational experience, okay? Also for team members. So although it seems that the idea is the development of a prototype, for us it's much more than that, okay? So for us, what matters is the educational experience of the students. It's for them to work on an international team Okay, and to develop a product from, <coughs> the, from their conception, the idea, the conception, until the final prototype, okay? And typically they have several difficulties, okay? They typically have differences in cultures, in fields, personalities, and typically there are some frictions on the teams. Sometimes we have, let's say, big problems, but typically they can solve these problems uh, between them, or they can solve them among them. And one of the problems that typically they, they mention is that it's difficult to maintain the motivation and unity of the team during the, the, the entire semester, okay? I just remember that one of the requirements for the engineers uh, was punctuality. And for instance, we typically every year have a problem with students. When a student from Northern Europe says that they are going to meet at 10, it's at 10. For a student from Southern Europe, that means 10 and a quarter, 10.30. And at the beginning, there is always a huge problem with that because there are also some frictions between the teams because they can't <coughs> understand how the southern guys get late and the southern guys can't understand why the northern guys are so strict. So this is typically a problem. Okay? So these are just some personal uh, opinions of the students. Okay? Typically, they all say that CPS widens their horizons. It's great to... to uh, work as part of a group, to meet deadlines, to work together, things like that. They also like to work in multi multicultural ambience uh, and stuff like that, okay? So these are typical the, the opinions of, of the students. I will not take too long on this. And just to finalize, I would just like to pass a video. It's what we call a team video. So every team that goes through EPS has to develop a video of their experience. And the contents of the video is completely free. It takes around one and a half minutes just for you to see.
the results of their experience. It is very useful for the consumer because <coughs> it will provide shade without the need to constantly keep changing the position of the shader. Setsan is technology, modern design and also sustainability in an everyday product. People can feel more comfortable in a greener planet which cares for its own environment. The developer team consists of five people from different engineering backgrounds. Marta from Holland, Christopher from Scotland, Manuel from Portugal, Sven from the Netherlands, and Eleni from Italy. Okay, so I would just like to acknowledge to COMPETS, to the 2020 project, also for the software for us is it uh, FCT and also IZEP and in HKK, our research institution. And with this, I end my presentation.